Introducing the battery powered, Wi-Fi enabled, wireless lighting control, streaming all in one unit with its own speakers. Let's deep dive into the Mixstream Pro Go. What makes this DJ equipment so unique is that it can be powered using the inbuilt rechargeable battery and taken anywhere to DJ with thanks to their built in high quality speakers. It's also easy to get started with as you don't need a laptop, simply power up and go. With its inbuilt Wi Fi, you can access five streaming services, including Amazon Music Unlimited. There's also access to Dropbox for cloud playback and wireless access to Engine DJ running on your laptop. Not forgetting two USB slots and an SD card slot for playing music stored locally. Compatibility for Serato DJ and Virtual DJ will be coming soon too. The powered speakers can be used as booth monitors or by themselves with a surprisingly high quality sound output. The Wi-Fi also unlocks the ability to control smart lighting from Nanoleaf and Philips Hue, so you can create a light show automatically in time with your music perfect for streamer DJs. The device boasts a seven inch multi-gesture high definition touchscreen, six inch platters with smart scratch feature, an effects section with four effects and two toggle switches, plus professional quarter inch mic input, and a balanced XLR and RCA outputs. As you can see, the deck section is pretty simple. We've got our play and cue button to play and cue the song. We can also sync our tracks together. The scratch mode here for the smart scratch mode basically allows you to scratch the track, and it will continue playing underneath. And then when you release, it'll jump to that point. Or we can turn that off and just scratch as normal as if it was in vinyl mode. That's the smart scratch feature. It's really responsive on the jog wheel and they feel nice to scratch with. We then have different pad modes here. We've got the cue mode where we can set up different cues and jump to different points in the track. You can shift and delete them. In any of these pad modes, if you press the mode again, we get access to the next layer of them. Just to make you aware, if we swipe down and go to the control center here, we can show the performance pads. So we can see the performance pads along here. You can see when I add them, they appear on the screen. We've also got saved loop, so we can save a loop. Toggle it on and off and jump back and forth to it. Shift and delete. Again, there's eight, mode, uh, eight pads there available by tapping save loop again. Auto loop, we've got everything from 32 beats to 16 to eight to four. Tap it again and we can go two, one, half, quarter. Go on to roll and then we can hold these pads to create different roll effects. Tap it again to do different parameters. And then underneath the roll, if we hold shift and press roll, we can access the onboard sampler. Press shift and roll again, and we've got another four pads available. You can load your own samples into the unit and then load them into that mode there as well. Then moving across, we've got our tempo adjust. It would have been nice to see this as a full size tempo adjust, especially because this has pro in the name. I would expect to see a full size tempo adjust. And it's the one thing that was a letdown on the previous models that people picked up on. It's still there. Obviously you can still use it to control your music pretty easily, but it's always nicer to have a full size one. I'd have liked to seen a bit more of a footprint so that we have a bit more room just for that full size tempo adjust. But again, just something to be aware of. And that's you mainly because these speakers are added at the bottom of the decks. The speakers are there and they make sense now. They didn't on the last units, I don't think, but on this one, it makes a lot of sense because it's battery powered. You can take this anywhere and play music without any wires and play it out of the speakers, which is great. Just to the left, we have the pitch bend buttons, which just allow you to speed up and slow down the track temporarily. And with the shift, you can change the pitch range from plus or minus 4% all the way up to 100%. So you can really change the speed of the track if you need to. Above, we have some other controls, which we're going to get onto shortly. By pressing this button here, we can access the lighting mode and you can connect either Philips Hue or Nanoleaf lights wirelessly to this unit. You can also connect DMX interfaces as well for more advanced lighting control. But as you can see here, I've got Nanoleaf lights, just connect them to the same Wi-Fi, press enable, and then you can see we've got this lighting control. Now, if I just step back, you can see when I play a song, the lights will react with the music and I can change the colors on the screen here. I can change the different modes here. We've got some quick access modes. It reacts to the fader. So this really is great for those streamer DJs. 
The mixer section has everything you would expect from a unit of this size. We've got our two channel faders and a cross fader as standard. We've got our bass, mid and treble, our low, mid and high EQs, which can be switched from minus 26 to you know, infinite kill within the settings. We've got our trim levels. We've got our browse control, so we can go back and scroll through our music and load with the left and right decks. We can also change the view by holding shift and tapping this view button. We can change the view on the screen. You can also toggle back and forth using these buttons as well. Then we have filter controls to filter the track just up here. With four onboard effects. Here we've got the echo. You can latch it on and keep it held on with the paddle style effect, or you can just hold it down and it flicks back off. We've got flanger, delay, or phaser. Each of those effects have different parameters you can adjust all within the touch screen. So if I was on echo, I can change the beat fraction using this touch screen. I can change the feedback, the frequency, and the amount that that's applied. You can't change these effects out. They're just as they are on the unit. Along the top of the unit, we can see we've got the speaker control. So I'm gonna play this speaker now through the microphone as loud as it'll go. They're surprisingly high quality and they do the job really well. You could use them as monitor speakers with some other speakers plugged into the back using this main to then control the, mon the main speakers and this to control our monitor speakers. Or you could just use them by themselves to DJ anywhere on the go. We also have our headphone controls for the mix and the volume over on this side too with a quarter and eighth inch jack output for the headphones along the front. A lot of the power in these units come from the Engine OS. It's the operating system on board. And it's the same for some of the Denon DJ equipment as well. But here, just as an example, you can see that we now have in the latest version that's coming soon of Engine 3.1, this touch effects. And this is something new that's been added just with a firmware update. So we can now apply effects by just holding on this XY pad. And we can do different filters and echoes. We can also latch it on here. And there are four different ones to choose from. We've got filter echo, filter reverb, filter roll, just turn the resonance up. And we've also got LFO Wub Echo. You can switch between the two channels here and here to apply the effects to different channels. I wanted to highlight that first because it just shows how powerful the Engine OS operating system is. That's just been added with a firmware update. So you can expect more features being added constantly to the internals of, of this unit, even if the hardware doesn't change. Diving deeper into the unit, we can swipe down and you can see this control center, which has quick access to lots of features that you might need or things to turn on and off. One be important one being the beat grid edit mode where we can change the beat of the grid and we can expand it, contract it, change new anchor points and do full grid editing all on the unit without a laptop plugged in, which is awesome. We also have quick access to things like the user profile. So we can change so many settings within this unit from playback modes to queue and loop settings to display settings, safety settings, library settings and deck colors. So there's lots to choose from from there. The deck colors don't really replicate anything on this unit. That's for other Engine OS uh, systems. Then we've got settings for the unit itself. Um, we've got device settings, mixer settings, mic settings, services, and how to update the firmware, which can be done just over Wi-Fi as well. So extremely powerful. All of the user profile settings can be saved to a USB drive and then plugged into any Engine OS system too. You'll also notice we have quick access to the lighting mode as well as this button here. We can record our sets. Now, please note if you're recording your sets, you can only record locally stored music such as that on a USB drive or you know stuff that you've downloaded legally. You can record streaming music because that's not available in any DJ software. So that's just something to be aware of. You can access the Wi-Fi so you can connect to different Wi-Fi's and also personal hotspot to your phone if you want to. We can then, as you can see here, go to browse, 
tap on this icon, you can see all the different streaming integrations. We've got Amazon Music, Beatport, BeatSource, SoundCloud, and Tidal. You can also connect to Dropbox, so you can store your music in the Dropbox cloud and then access it that way. Or you can even just access your laptop, which I've not got plugged in here. I've just connected it to the same network and I can load music from the engine DJ software on there. Plus, we've got the sampler content where you can put your sampler content into the pads for those one-shot samples. And we've got the device, which is just a USB device that's plugged in. So many options, so much flexibility. Whenever you're in one of those options, we can go into playlists, we can scroll up and down like this. We can preview in the headphones any songs by just tapping the preview button, and it will download the song if it's a streaming song, preview it, and then you can swipe to play. So for example, you can see it's loading. And then we're going to get a preview of the song and we can tap through that preview and listen in the headphones. We can then swipe and decide to load it to deck one or deck two. And then it will load it into there straight from the Amazon Music Unlimited streaming service. Let's go back to browse. We can search through these services with a nice QWERTY keyboard and you can search for specific songs and you can quickly toggle between different services. So I could then go on to Beatport and it's going to connect to Beatport. And you can see we're now in the Beatport streaming service. These are extra paid subscriptions for each of those services, but it's a great way to access millions of songs. If you're using a locally stored device such as a USB stick, you can do even more. You can go in there and create playlists, for example, just on the unit itself. You can tick different tracks to add to that playlist. You can then drag tracks up and down. You can drag and drop them into the playlist. Added, as you can see, we can toggle off and it's really intuitive to work your way around this onboard display. So one of the best things about this unit is that it comes in at $839. Yes, that's right, you get a lot for your money at that price. The fact that this is truly standalone, it's also got those speakers on board, you don't need anything else. You can just buy this unit and start DJing, which is great, whereas a lot of other units might need a laptop, you know, try to connect to it or to export your music through. This really is that true standalone and it now makes sense having speakers on it compared to the predecessors because it's battery powered and you can take this thing out on the go, and DJ out on the go. This would be a great unit for beginners just starting out because it has all those essential features you need. I'm always torn about this thing with the Mixstream series because they've added Mixstream Pro to these series and I think it needs to be split because I wouldn't say this is a pro unit just for the fact that it's only got the four performance pads and not eight. It's got a small tempo adjust, not a full size tempo adjust. You know, these are the things that I think need to be added to warrant the pro title, but that's not for me to decide. I'd love to hear in the comments what you think about that particular thing. Um, the big selling point for this really as well is that the engine OS operating system inside does constantly get updated and coming with a future update, I need to let you know that there is a daytime mode coming. So when you take this out into the, the daytime, it'll basically invert the screen um, and you can toggle that mode on and off so that you can see the screen much better because you won't be able to see it very well in daylight as it currently is. And obviously this is designed to be taken out on the go. If you want to just see it in action, make sure to go click this video and go watch us perform on this unit and have some fun with it. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.